Let's learn how to use the star field genius converter. I've got StarNet open and uh, I'd like to import a raw file from field genius. Before I start, I'm going to open up a sample project for this exercise. So I've downloaded the materials folder onto my desktop and I'm going to open 21 FGTTS. Open that up and now we're ready to start. Now, Field Genius stores observations in a um, TDS format raw file. So you'll find that the workflow you follow for Field Genius is the same that you'll use when you're using either the TDS converter or the Carlson converter. So let's go and find the Field Genius converter, which is installed in your microsurvey folder. You'll find your current version of StarNet, and in here you'll see a list of all the available converters. I'll launch Star Field Genius. The converter has launched and it's ready for me to specify an input location, an output location, and I configure a few different options. Let's do the first exercise. So my input location, I will browse and I'm going back to that desktop and into the materials folder. And field test TPS, here we find the raw file. So when I pick on open, I've assigned that for import. The other thing I need to do is specify an output location. I always recommend putting it in the same location as your project. And so I'm just going up one level and I'm going to copy this DAP file that's about to be created into the materials folder. So I'll pick on save here. Now, once you've got these two set up, what you'll discover is that um, the View button becomes activated. So if I pick on View, that's going to launch this uh, Field Genius file in my text editor. And so if I need to review it, I can go through it. Um, something that a lot of people don't know is if there are sections of the input file that you'd like to have the converter comment um, skip over, then you can input dot data off. That'll tell it to skip everything below. Or you can comment out items. So uh, with a raw file, of course, a double dash is uh, interpreted as a uh, comment. Or with StarNet, a patent uh, sign can also tell it to skip that record. So you've got the text editor. And if you know how to read one of these files, then you can modify if you need to. Okay, I'll close that up. I'm not going to make any changes. And now let's just go through um, the first selection to do a conversion. So first I'll show you what happens if I tell it to output as 2D and I pick on import. I always get a message here telling me what the result is. Sometimes if you've got a problem, then the message here will actually be an error message referring you to have a look in the log to see if you can find out why you had a problem but this is just fine and I can pick on OK. Now the only thing that's happened in the background is it's created this file that's shown here. And if I want to have a look at it, I can pick on View. So here's the contents of that file. And so what you'll find is it's included all of the comments that were in there. And if I go down here, what we'll find is we've got all of the 3D observations are reduced to 2D because I have the 2D option on. So we'll notice that we've got, in this case, I've got an M record, which is, uh, that means occupied point 1, backsided point 2, four-sided 5. We've got a single horizontal angle, and we've got a horizontal distance and a description. There's no slope distance. There's no zenith angle. So let's turn off. 2D data. And I'll do another import and I'll just overwrite that data file that I created before. Now if I go into view, we're going to find if I scroll back to that same place as before, now I've got the same information here except it's also, it's giving us, uh, or no, we'll have a look at this one here. We've got a horizontal angle. Now we've got a slope distance, a zenith angle, height of instrument, height of target, and then the same description that you saw before. There's a few other options to play around with. Um, 
create M lines for all redundant side shots and I'm going to uncheck this include field file notes so that uh, the next one that uh, loads up it's going to have a lot less comments in it. So we're going to get 3D and it's going to use the special function where it's going to differentiate between M lines and SS lines. Let me do another import and override and we'll view our results again. So now as I scroll through, I've got less comments and uh, what the converter has done is it's gone through our data set and for every measurement that is redundant, so in this case 0.5 we know has been observed more than once, here's another time. So whenever you have a redundant observation, it will be written with an M code here. And so an M code is the type of record that is intended to be included in the overall network. And then for other shots that were just uh, treated as side ties, they're written as SS shots. So it has the same information, but this point number six, this observation is not going to be included as part of the network and therefore not as part of the adjustment. They'll just be treated as side shots. Okay, or alternatively, I can tell it just to create M lines for all my side shots. So let's do another import and overwrite. And I'll pick on view. And now we'll see as we get in here, notice how that observation to six, for example, which used to be an SS, now it's an M. Everything is written as an M. Every point in the whole network will be treated as part of the main network. Just a few other options to turn on that I won't explore. If you've got stakeout uh, data, then they can be included as side shots. Field notes you saw me turn on before, that included additional comments. Change dash station characters to. What this option will do is if you have a station that happens to have a dash in it, what that can cause a problem. So let's see if I can do a little modification here. Let's say I told it that I've occupied a point one, but instead of it being one, let's say the field people didn't know that uh, this makes things awkward with Starnet, so they've stored it as point one dash A. So if I save this, and if I do another import without this option on, and oh, and that caused an error. <laughs> it wasn't happy with that dash line right there. Yeah, okay, that's because I, I've changed the wrong thing. Let me go back in here. Instead of making this my error, let's take this first side shot. I did a foresight to point two, or actually, let me go further down. I'll find another side shot that's further down. Okay, so instead of uh, foresighting point 13, let's make it point 13A. All right, now I'll save that. And we'll do an import. And overwrite. Okay, and now I'm gonna scroll down or I'm gonna have a look at my newly created data file. And what we'll see here is we've got 13-A, so it's uh, recorded this faithfully. But what you're going to find is that if you use points with dashes in them, the dashes that separate characters here will look to the program exactly the same as the dashes that separate characters here or stations here. And that can cause a mix up. So if I had, for example, backsighted 13A, then we'd have an additional hyphen and that would mix things up. So you got to watch out for hyphens in your field data point IDs. If that has happened though, here's a little tool that'll allow you to fix that. So I'm changing the dash station character to, I'll make it, yeah, I'll, okay, we'll just make it a colon. Okay, so let's do another import, I'll do an overwrite. Now when I go in here, let's see what happened to point 13A. So 13A is the same, but what's happened is instead of changing 
the actual station name, it has changed the character that Starnet's going to use to separate observations. So you notice how we've got colons here instead. And right at the top, we've also got a dot sep inline operator. And so this will tell Starnet when it tries to read through this data that anytime it finds a colon, consider the colon to have the same meaning as the hyphen as a station separator. So Starnet would be able to work with that. But just to finish this off, I'm actually going to change that and I'm going to get out. I'm going to go back in there and find 13A and I'll undo that little butchering of the field data. And let's go through the final steps of uh, adding this to a project and have a look at it. So I've actually got it configured the way I want it. Create M lines at from to is the station order. I'm going to do one more import and an overwrite and yes and OK. So my converter has now done its job. And as I mentioned, it's created a DAT file in this location. When I close this, I want to add that data file to my project that I currently have open. Starnet doesn't know where it is. You have to know where to find it. So now in the data input files, I'll pick on the plus, the add file button, and I need to browse into my materials folder. And there's the data file that we just created. I'll pick on open. And now that file is added to the input files. And by default, it's opened up here in the editing window as well, in case I need to make changes. And generally you do, because what you'll find is if you try and run the adjustment right now, it will not have enough information to be able to compute a minimally constrained adjustment. Let me just prove it. I'll pick on Adjust Network, and it tells me right off the bat, I have no fixed XY stations, I have no fixed Z stations, and it can't compute a coordinate for point one, which is the first point that's mentioned in our data. But what you'll find is most of the converters will recognize the information that you need to compute a minimally constrained adjustment, and it will include it, but it's just going to comment it out. And that way, it'll be skipped over until you take the pound mark out from in front. And I want to fix this coordinate, so it looks like when the field crew went out there, they decided to start at point one and they manually assigned this coordinate. And so I want to fix the X, the Y, and the Z. And so I will follow the last of these three measurements with three exclamation marks. Now let's run that again. What I've done is I've addressed these two problems by giving it one fixed station. I'll pick on yes. However, I've still got a problem in the error panel. Now it tells me I didn't have any problem in, in computing what one was, but now I don't know where two is. And the trouble is we've got a distance here between one and two, but we don't have an absolute direction. And so what you'll find is further down here, the field crew had also assumed a direction of zero between one and two, and it recorded that. But this is also commented out with a B record. And so I'll just take the pound sign out in from the front of that B record, and this is enough now. Now we've got a direction, and up here we've got a coordinate. This will be enough for us to be able to compute a minimally constrained adjustment. And let's prove it. I'll pick on yes, and now happily I see that I've got a chi-square test result, and I've got a network plot. I have chi-square test that is failing. That's something that we'll address later on. Thank you for following along with this exercise.